ko tingo ba? Jangan kamu main-main sama ni mad volcano ha. Salah ko pijak, tukubur ko di dalam. <laughs> eh, tukubur lagi. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Adam Shamil, your host for Tabin Protect, Produce, Restore. And in the next few episodes, I will be showing you around one of WWF Malaysia's priority landscapes, Tabin, and the many amazing works these guys are doing here. And did you know that Tabin Wildlife Reserve is actually one of the last remaining lowland diptrocarp rainforests in this region? It supports all the iconic and protected wildlife of Sabah, such as the Bornean elephant, the Bornean sun bear, the Bornean orangutan, proboscis monkey, stambada, and even the clouded leopard. Tabin was also home to, unfortunately, the last Sumatran rhino here in Malaysia. Today, I will be speaking with a few experts to find out more about efforts on conserving these precious wildlife here in Tabin. Let's go! Ya, tuh lah di, anu, di pokok bayur itu. Kopi versi ya? Oi. Hai. Halo, apa yang Halo. kamu tengok itu, Wak? Kami tengok sarang orang hutan. Sarang orang hutan? Ya, woi, besar lah tuh. Nah, tuh Saya tidak tahu pula orang hutan pada buat sarang. Oh. Boleh saya tengok? Tengok, tengok. Kau coba kau tengok. Orang hutan, they actually make nest every day. Oh, they do? Yeah, so one nest per orang hutan, except for the mother oh, and wow, baby. Oh, wow, I could see it. So, they... Uh, build nests every day to avoid from predation, mosquitoes, and also um, cold nights. I see. And how many orangutan are there here in Tabin? In Tabin, we have about 1,200 uh, orangutans. 1, but in 200. Sabah, uh, we have about 11,000. So 1,200 comes from Tabin. And on the south part of Tabin, we have Silabukan Forest Reserve. Okay. We have okay. about 50 orangutans. Dan ada lagi tanggapan kan, Angkel, uh, hmm. di mana uh, kita selalu menyamakan di antara orang hutan dan juga monyet. Kan? Nah. Macam saya pun saya fikir bila saya orang hutan kita selalu cakap monyet, monyet, monyet kita jawabkan. <laughs> Tapi sebenarnya apakah yang membezakan di antara oh. monyet dan orang hutan ni secara umumnya lah? Oke, okay. antara orang hutan dengan monyet nih, dia punya beza. Yang orang hutan nih dia tidak ekor, monyet nih dia baik ekor, sama. Oh. Orang hutan ni kan dia pandai buat dia punya apa sarang sendiri dia pandai buat rumah kalau dia mau tidur. Orang hutan lah. Ya, kalau kalau monyet? monyet ni tidak dia tidur di kayu sih. Oh, <laughs> tidur di kayu sih. And also uh, Don a very quick question I just wanted to ask you how do we ensure that these orang hutan they continue striving here in the forest? So the problem with uh, orang hutan uh, the threats are habitat degradation, okay. habitat loss and uh, forest fragmentation. Hmm. So the work that we are doing in Tabin, we are actually trying to connect between Tabin and Silabukan mm -hmm. through establishing a wildlife and ecological corridor linking Tabin and Silabukan. So we are working with partners, the Sawit Kinabalu Group, okay. to establish this uh, connectivity for wildlife. So what about the rest of the wildlife here in Sabah, uh, the, the you know, endangered, uh, um, rare, threatened uh, terrestrial mammals? I'm glad you asked because okay. our colleague Dr. Green is actually doing wildlife survey now. Oh, Dr. Dr. Who? Dr. Green. Dr. Green. Okay. So I think you should join him. I should too. I should really go. Terima kasih ya. Saya bagi kau balik. Saya mau pergi jumpa dulu Dr. Green. Bye. Okay. Kopi pasian. Okay. Let's go now. Okay. Hi, Dr. Glenn. I was hoping I could catch you in action doing your wildlife survey. Hello, Adam. Nice to see you. Pleasure meeting you as well. Hi, we've just finished the wildlife survey. Oh, okay. So there's a path here, two kilometers. We're going in, we're trying to find animals and their signs. Mm -hmm. I found this laran fruit. Oh, And you see here, some of the squirrels and the monkeys have Let's been eating that. There you go. All right. So this example of some of the wildlife that we have in Tabin. 
Mm. And what are the other species that are considered rare in Tabin but so, could, be, could often be found here in you know, this forest? Yeah, it's a, it's a very important question because Tabin is really special for Sabah, mm -hmm. uh, as well as more than 1,000 orangutans. We have many of the animals that live in the forest with those uh, orangutans, like gibbons, leaf monkeys, some of the squirrels that are eating this laran. Mm. Uh, and these are the reasons we want to protect and look after Sabin as a, as a special place. And how do you uh, typically perform a wildlife survey? Well, okay, so we go in early in the morning, uh, just after dawn, six o'clock or so, and then you look for the signs like this, or we look for the, listen for the calls. Okay. Gibbons have a beautiful song early in the morning. They're good singers, aren't they? They are beautiful singers. <laughs> and then sometimes you're lucky and you can see something in the forest, ah. but that's very hard to do. All right, so what are the um, other species that are considered to be you know, endangered and threatened yes. and what is being done to protect them? Well, so as well as the gibbons and the leaf monkeys I've told you about, there are also hornbills, which many people have heard at I, some point. I've actually seen them on my way here. Okay, yeah. okay, so they're beautiful big birds. Some of them are threatened uh, by hunting. Mm -hmm. And so the important thing is we have a big enough space, tabin, mm -hmm. and the government offices make sure that nobody comes in and makes their farms but also some of the big plantations on the outside as we came in we saw the oil palm plantations if they can lock their gates at night and stop any hunters coming in and if there's uh, workers understand the law you're not allowed to hunt in tabin yeah that will protect many of the wildlife inside you know i could i could ask i, I could ask you so many questions okay. but we are actually running out of time but one final question before we come to an end um throughout these entire episodes and of all the people we've interviewed yeah. uh, you are actually the only person who actually came to tabin in the early 80s oh. and as in, under your capacity as a researcher and fast forward to today uh, after almost 40 years i believe um here yes. we are again yes, you are yes. here again um under your capacity as a uh, scientist yes with much greater knowledge and wisdom about this forest between now and then what has changed so uh yeah we were young men then uh, as you <laughs> can imagine age, maybe, uh, well <laughs> probably for sure uh, i was working for wdf malaysia then as i am today and this whole area all of the uh, uh, uh oil palm estates were not here this was all forest Crazy. everywhere and uh, Tabin did not exist then. What was it Tabin, called back then? Tabin was called uh, Lumarau Forest Reserve and Silabukan Forest Reserve. And just by good fortune, uh, because WWF funded the work uh, with uh, Dr. John Payne, we were able to say this area, Tabin, is really important for Sabah, even now, 40 years ago. This is where the last rhinoceroses were, this is where the, the Banteng, the orangutans, please set it aside. And luckily, they set it aside before all the oil palm plantations developed. If we'd been 10 years later, I don't know if Tabin would still be here today. It has only been a few questions, but I've definitely certainly have learned a lot from you. Thank you so much, Dr. Glenn. Shall we? Yes, thank you, Adam. So tell me about the uh, Sumatran rhino. Well, you should ask John Payne. Besides wildlife, Tabin is also unique for its mud volcanoes. This particular mud volcano is very much frequented by wildlife, which serves as a mineral salt lick for them. In the next episode of Tabin Protect, Produce, Restore, we will be looking at what goes behind conservation, spatial planning, and how government and stakeholders come together for one common purpose to protect and conserve Tabin. My name is Adam Shamil, and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.